I'm saying like All right, the kids going. nowadays they never saw they never saw Jordan yeah, they didn't even see score Kobe eight points you know, saw, in, their, saw in his last year. And now they see Kobe at the end, man. They're talking so much smack about Kobe. I'm like, you guys don't understand. Like, this happened you want to short short memory, right? Yeah. This yeah. happened to Jordan too, right? It happened so, to everybody. So you're gonna talk about the four point fifty game, four four in a row fifty game. You're gonna talk about what? He's gonna go. The Kobe memory. The Kobe memory. I was gonna say talk about eighty one, but are you gonna talk about that? No, I'm gonna talk about the start of the dynasty with him and Shaq. I'll talk about eighty one. The first one they beat the Blazers. That's a that's an actual real memory for me. I'll, I'll, I'll talk with that. My favorite Kobe like single highlight was the one he pulled on Wilson Chandler at the Garden like four years ago, where he did the pivot. Oh yeah, and then spun and, and hit it. And Spike Lee yeah. started laughing. Yeah, that one was pretty serious. But like, well, he didn't want to pet or anything like that, but that's one. Sixty-two thing, like, at the Garden. Is that that, one, that, that was a sixty-two. Yeah. That's right. He had the record. That's the most. And Curry was like two points off. Oh, sorry, so. sorry, sorry. No, it's sixty-one. Ryan was sixty-one. Melo broke it at sixty-two. Yeah. The year yeah. after or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. That's what you're. Uh, you can get highlights for all these. Yeah, I'll just talk about my favorite one was the one at the garden. Alright. Yeah. As long as yeah, as long as that video to back it up. Alright. We'll go man man. So we'll just talk about Kobe. Yeah, we still have to talk about so Kobe and MVP. So we'll do Kobe, everybody share their point. Kobe and then MVP. I'll just bring up. Alright, so George. who you you and Paul George or Paul George. George. No, Paul you talk about Curry then, I'll talk about Kawhi. Is that what you want to do? Yeah, I'll do Kawhi. No, no, we are we doing except Curry? Why don't we say, well, yeah, we'll say Kobe, we'll say Curry has it in the bag, but let's talk about some of the yeah. guys who might have a yeah. shot. Yeah. I'll talk about Kawhi then. You can talk about LeBron if you want. Or Lowry. Yeah, I'll talk about Lowry. Lowry's yeah, I'll do Lowry, even though he's a dark horse. All right, we're rolling. I'm trying, when you guys talk about LeBron, or sorry, about Kobe's moments, I'll do a BXO. So you get the tears ready? Yeah. Okay, I'll take tears. Tears? Yeah, I'll lead them, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. MVP talk, that's what we're going to start off with. No, we're doing Kobe. Oh, we're doing Kobe, yeah. yeah. Just going to yeah. roll in here. All right. Favorite Kobe Bryant moment. Uh, Kobe's in his last season right now. Yes. He made the decision about a week and a half ago. We all know ticket prices, including the 76ers ticket prices, skyrocketed. Mm. Um, Put that towards my rent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, coming into Toronto tomorrow, which is going to be obviously an important game, Kobe is going to have a... Chills down his spine when he thinks about the 81 that he dropped. Um, what's your favorite moment that Kobe, favorite Kobe well, Bryant moment ever? Speaking of the 81, that, that is my, I mean, I'm not really like a Kobe guy, you know, but that moment of the moment is the one that sticks out the most. Because I was watching it literally in my room. It kind of hurt as a rapper. It hurt well, watching it. You gotta appreciate it. it. And I'm just like, what are these guys doing? Like, why isn't no triple team happening? Or why is Matt, to, why or, is Matt Bonner guarding Kobe one on one? Yeah, like what? Like I mean, like I didn't understand. First, I was just like, I can't believe this is actually happening. Like when he hit seventy, I was just like, oh my gosh! Like I'm actually witnessing this. Like yeah. this is happening. This is and Sam Mitchell pacing like, up and down. Yeah, like like who in this day and age can score this much points at and the way the game is being played now? And it's just for him to do that. That's just amazing. So that alone is my Kobe moment, even though it's against my, my city, that, that's the, the moment. City took me. the lumps that day. They took the lumps that whole season. <laughs> they did. <laughs> that was a hard season, bro. Oh, we had, uh, we had Jalen Rose. Our best, our best guy was Mo Pete that year. So, but it, with all respect, I mean, that's unbelievable. He yeah. dropped like 55 in the second half. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of throwback. I'm going to go back to 2000 when I was a young dude. I'm not going to say how old because that's going to reveal how how old I am, but um, I'm gonna talk about the start of the dynasty. Talk about Kobe and Shaq, how everyone wrote them off to start before they got their first ring. They were playing against a Trailblazers team that had stars. I mean, you had guys like Rasheed Wallace, you had Scottie Pippen, you could still play. And they're going down to the fourth quarter, down 20 points. Kobe threw up a lob. Everyone's seen the highlight where Shaq mm -hmm. obviously throws it down. Mm -hmm. Does a fist pump and then Shaq running down the court in Shaq fashion. Mm -hmm. um, Kobe was unbelievable that game. 25 points, 11 rebounds, 7 assists, 4 blocks. Uh, that's got to be my top Kobe memory. And that was when I knew this team, Kobe and Shaq, is something special. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that's going to go on for a long time. These guys controlled the NBA after that for a good three years. So uh, that's probably my top memory. 
I'm going to have to go with something that uh, New York fans are not going to like too much. But when he dropped, he was 61 at the Garden. Yes. And uh, my favorite moment by far was definitely the one on the movie put on Wilson Chandler, which was Jordan S with the pump yeah. fake and uh, and the spin backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Ended up hitting that uh, tough shot leading in. And even Spike Lee got up mm-hmm. and uh, had to admire it and yeah. uh, show some love with the uh, with the claps. That was probably my favorite game. That was Kobe, you know, was... Not too long ago, so I saw obviously appreciated it. Wasn't too young to see it, mm-hmm. and um, I'm never mad when the Knicks take a loss. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Kobe is Kobe, man. Like he'll always be the Black Mamba. You know, he'll always be that that guy that just just has that killer the instinct. Kobe face. Like, you know, the that Kobe, Kobe face. Like you know, like he's, when he's out there on the <laughs> court, it's literally like he's gonna kill you. And it's just that's the way he, he sees it. And it's, like you don't see a lot of players with that type of mentality yeah, anymore, you know? So it's like it's gonna be hard to like see that go away, you know, where it's like, hey, you know, you still have like maybe what's another player you guys think that I has think that Chris Paul is the closest guy. Gonna kill you. But well, but, uh, it's yeah. a different age now. I mean a lot of these guys like LeBron and Melo, they all grew up in a circuit playing high school ball against each other, so they're kinda of buddies. Right, they've known yeah. each other since like fourteen years old. Exactly. So Kobe grew up friends. in Italy. Kobe I, grew up like raised in, literally raised in Italy, mm-hmm. came back to the States to prove a point. Yeah. Went straight to the pros, which was unheard of in ninety six. Mm-hmm. Um I mean, he's legitimately the black bomber. Like, he comes on the court and he wants to destroy his opponents. You, just, you don't see it yeah. in uh, basketball. You don't actually, see it in any sport. You actually, really see it. One player who I say has that, Russell yes, Westbrook. Yes, I was going to yes. say Westbrook. Yeah. Russell Westbrook is probably the closest player with that same mentality. Where A lot like, more emotional, but yeah, the same kind of I'm thing. I'm going yeah. to kill you. Yeah. Like, he, yeah, he's definitely the closest because he doesn't have any friends. If you really think about it, like, <laughs> Everyone in the designer. league, everyone Maybe. in the league is like buddy buddy with everyone. Like, yeah. yeah, you know, hey, how you doing? He's not about that. You know, he, he, well, he is in his farewell tour because I was talking about it the other day. Um, I'm talking about Russell Russell. No, I'm talking about Kobe and Kobe. So this whole farewell tour is a bit different because now you're seeing Kobe going into game, yeah. knowing that he doesn't. It's like he's running for president or something. Yeah, so exactly. He's lobbying for all these like trying to shake so hands. I think there's got to be a certain level to this farewell tour. Like, I don't want to see Kobe giving dabs to um, unknown rookies exactly. after the game. To exactly. Jakar right? Samson. Yeah. To Jakar Samson and Robert Covington. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of, for me, seeing Kobe do that, it's like, Kobe Kobe doesn't give props to guys even when they lose. Yeah. He gives props to them in post-game conferences, but he's not shaking their hands. That's just not how Kobe is. Um, but I think... Kobe, like, deep down, he knew that the, the venom of the Black Mamba kind of seeped out once he took that Achilles injury, right? Like, he's had, he has a lot of years on his body. He's gone deep in the playoffs a lot, which we can appreciate. We've all talked about memories that we've had about Kobe. So, um, you know, now, now you can just sit back and you got to give the guy his due. Like, he's, he's kind of soaking in the glory and you yeah. got to appreciate Kobe for not this year, but what he's done in his whole career. Yeah. He laid it all on the floor every time he went out there. And like you said, coming into the NBA at such a young age, all those minutes piling up, and he's had every injury in the book, mm-hmm. especially most recently, right? Yeah. And you can see this year, his body just couldn't handle it. Yeah. And props to him for, it, it took him long enough, it's too bad that we had to see him go through this before he said, and the whole league's talking about Kobe, the Kobe watch for all the wrong reasons, and he just threw in the towel. But like you said, it is tough to watch him go on the court and not be his typical yeah. black mamba, and, and just you know, shake hands with all these people. When you want to see that, that's not the guy yeah. we grew up to. Yeah, and to be honest, just, just to kind of piggyback on what you're you're saying, um, I think he I think he knew like he was gonna retire. Like he knew like mm-hmm. he just wanted to go into the season just to see if maybe you know he can play a lot better. But since you know he's seeing that okay, it's not getting any better. You know, I'm still playing. You know, not at a high level. So I'm gonna call it quits. Because remember, he did say he already talked to Jordan about it in the summertime. Him and Phil Jackson have been talking about it. So, like, I think it's something that he he was going to do, but just knowing Kobe, you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, the media drove him out of the league and whatnot, and knowing Kobe, he's mentally strong. He's not going to let anyone drive him out of the league but himself. Mm-hmm. If he wants to go, he's going to go because he wants that's to true. go, you know, on his own terms. So I think that's really more of what it was he needed to see if he can still play at that level, and he knows that he can't, so it's like it's time to go. That's the thing I think with his numbers, obviously going to take a dip, uh, like his percentages and his points, 
And you said this before we had our talk. Kobe doesn't want to be a role player. He doesn't exactly. want to be the guy six man exactly. or whatever. If, if he's not yeah, the Mamba, if he can't be the Mamba, he's done. And, and then, you can respect him for exactly. that. Exactly. Like I said, I think a, a couple of weeks ago on the show, and he, he said, like, if I'm not going to be in the league to average 20 points a game, I'm not going to be that. You know, so that's just the type of player he is. It's he's not he's that right now. Yeah. Though, for the stretch, he is not. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he is right now, and I think that's why he's like, I'm done. Right? Yeah, look, like we fall. We just alluded to like that same mentality was the reason for his greatness. Like exactly. he's like Iverson had a similar like bulldog mentality where he's one of the most competitive athletes we've seen, not only in basketball, but in any sport, um, they're not willing to take a back seat. They're exactly. just wired that way. Yeah, that's right? really wired. So, exactly. yeah. I mean, for us to see them kind of take that back seat for maybe a six-man role, it's not that he can't do it. It's just, I think, for him, it's not what he wants out of basketball. So, I mean, when it's time to call the quiz, it's time to call the quiz. Right? Yeah. yeah. I know that there's been a lot of great players during his era, but it's really surprising that he only won the one MVP that he did. He has multiple yeah. finals MVPs, no other one MVP. And sticking on MVP quickly, we got to go to our early, almost at the midway point, but early um, MVP picks. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Curry's the lock. Yeah. But other than Curry, because that's self-explanatory, who do you guys like as a dark horse, potentially? Uh, I'm going to go with Paul George. Um, I mean, he's been tearing the league up. Um, he got he got player of the month for um, November, um, averaging twenty nine, um, and like he was basically you know going off of that, and he's averaging thirty right now for the month of December. So I mean he's doing his thing. He just had forty eight last night, you know career high. So oh my God, you know like Good he, is, he is he is man he's at a different level right now. It's just good to see, especially with his injury, coming off the injury, and like he's just a totally different player. And like I was talking with um with Zane, like it's I think it's because he's at the four position now, mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. no one can guard him at that position. You know? So he has defenders in his mercy. But he's a good enough defender to guard those fours yeah, too, exactly, right? To right? Play with so the length. Like, like, he's starting to learn the position a lot more, you know, and and it's showing showing by his numbers, numbers don't lie, and he's, he's killing it right now. It's funny too, because in college, all these guys are labeled as tweeners. If you're, you know, six foot eight playing the power forward, they're saying, no, you gotta put on the length. But it seems like with the NBA now, they're looking for the smaller, more athletic per position. We see Draymond play the five, and he's six nine, and Paul George at six eight, mm-hmm. playing the power forward. It seems like a new wave of guys coming yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. Who's your pick? Speaking of numbers don't lie, I'm gonna bring up some numbers <laughs> here. I'm gonna pull a Mike Rose and go to my stats. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're talking 50% field goal, 22 points a game, 7.6 boards, 2.7 assists, 1.9 steals, and a block a game. If I told you this player has a finals MVP and a championship ring, the only thing that can match it is an actual season, regular season MVP. This guy's Kawhi Leonard. This cool guy MVP. is one of my, the best two-way players I have seen in the league. He can do both things. He's shooting over 90% from corner three, which is unheard of. He's wow. literally unguardable. You can this drop my jaw on that one. I did not this know This guy's out. shooting over 40%. I want to see I want to see him in the three-point contest in Toronto. I think he's going to have a great year. I mean, outside of Curry, you're talking that he's contributing to a team and the key reason that they're 17-4. and four. So um, I think he's going to make a lot more noise later on in the year. We're going to see San Antonio in the second half of the year. You know, a lot of people, the light bulb goes off. Oh, yeah, San Antonio, we always forget about them. And this is a guy who gets stronger as the year goes on. He's going to be in the discussion this year for sure. I can agree with that. Yeah, those are two guys that we've talked about, uh, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, being very similar players, guys who are on both sides of the floor. And Kawhi Leonard, I think he's probably the best defender in the league, bar yeah. none. Like, doesn't yeah. matter by position, because we've talked about he's probably the best Steph Curry defender Robert. in the league yeah. at six foot eight, whatever yeah. he is. Um, but for my MVP, I'm going to go with a small guy, a dark horse, uh, MVP of the East for sure, if there was an award. Kyle Lowry. We see this being in Toronto night in and night out. If he wasn't on this team, I don't know where they'd be. Exactly. With DeMar DeRozan yeah, taking sure. those lumps sometimes going against good defenders, yeah. um, Kyle Lowry always shoots the Raptors back in the end and not out of them. Mm-hmm. He's one of the one of the best three point shooters we've seen I mean, he's in a while. To, he's second to Curry yeah. for most threes. Being I think this, this, is all, this is all if Curry never existed. Right? Yeah, yeah. Let's, just, let's <laughs> just make this all clear. Yeah, fantasy <laughs> just so we know. Yeah, this, yeah. Is a, this is a, a fantasy yeah. universe where yeah. Steph Curry doesn't exist. It's a second. It's not <laughs> you know, in the picture. 
But um, the Raptors have a strong case. Um, yeah. You know, if they somehow were, you know, to wrap up a one seed, which would never happen this year. <laughs> but if they were and Golden State were to take some time yeah, off, can't deny the fact that you even said Draymond Green had some props towards uh, Kyle Lowry, exactly, right? and he yeah. recognizes him. he's another guy. You know, he doesn't get props too often, oh, but he yeah. recognizes the work that's put in by Kyle Lowry. He's a vocal leader. He takes charge of the defensive end. He'll take his charges, and uh, like I said, he goes to the rack. He dishes the ball. He shoots the deep threes. There's not much that he doesn't do. And he came in the season uh, dropping right. some weight. Right? Yeah, and let's, he's no more fat jokes. He's the Paul Clay Thompson in the yeah. second best player on that team. Let's be honest with ourselves. Like he is, I mean, as well as Steph Curry has been playing, we got to give Draymond his props. He is the locker room leader. He's the guy that wills these guys to win every night. Like he's. Are you putting him the MVP consideration right now? Is that what you're doing? In my in my alternate universe where Steph Curry doesn't exist, I would put Draymond Green in that conversation too. I, I mean, I, I love mean, they game. were talking about it a little bit last year. Most improved and most, most defensive. Improved. Yeah, both. yeah. So like, I mean, it's I not see, crazy. I see. I not It's not a crazy thought because I mean, you take out Draymond Green from that team and they're not the same no, at, not all. at all. So you know, and those are MVP. You know, that's the definition. That's if you the take definition. them, if you take them out of your you team, that yeah. off of that who team? suffers the most? Which yeah, team who, suffers exactly, the most? Exactly. Let's right? let's be honest with ourselves. Well, a guy who's all the teams in the MVP race, LeBron, LeBron James. James. Like right. we always take it for granted how yeah. good this guy is and the level that he plays at. Um, it's very obvious that um, they're trying to really limit his minutes. They don't want his body to take a toll. This is a guy who's gone deep to the final yeah, he's every single year he's for the last yeah. however many years. Um, he's basically the Kobe. Yeah. yeah, right. So like, I think I think you're gonna like in terms of managers, they want to ease yeah. up and then post all star race. They want to really wrap things up when Irving comes back. When they have a full team, they want to regain that chemistry. Then you're gonna start seeing LeBron make some noise. But I LeBron think, is LeBron. You can tell his foot's off the pedal right now. Yeah, but even yeah. in the Toronto game, mm-hmm. and like he's he's played like what the most minutes at his age. Yeah, he's played the most yeah. minutes yeah. in the NBA. And carrying all the weight that he does, yeah. albeit good weight, he's you know, in really yeah. good shape, but it's got to take a toll on your defense. And he knows team. he's good, he's confident. Yeah. I mean, but Miami fans chanted the other day, LeBron is tired, which I thought was ridiculous. Yeah. He just responded by pointing to the ring. Yeah, which he won so, with Miami. So which he won for yeah. Miami, yeah. and he's obviously a key reason. So uh, the guy's going to be the discussion. He's like one of the best players I've ever seen in the game, so he's another guy who's going to be up there. Um, you know, we'll see if Curry can actually put his foot off the pedal and make this a bit more of a contested race because right now he's just head over heels yeah. um, over everyone. Yeah. That wraps up our MVP talk. When we get back next week, we're going to update you guys on Golden State. If they've taken any losses, can't see them taking any. And also, of course, the Raptors and the rest of the NBA. See you guys next week on the block. That was 16 and a half. Was it? Yeah. That's what it's saying. It's right in front of you. The, the guy's just... <laughs>